Hello and welcome to my next video on pH. So some definitions. We use the Bronsted Lowry definitions, which is an acid is a proton donor, so it releases an H plus ion, and a base is a proton acceptor. An alkali is a soluble base. Now there are different types of acids. You can have monobasic, dibasic, and tribasic. Now monobasic means that it will, if it fully dissociates, will produce one hydrogen ion. So HCl will split to H plus and Cl minus. Dibasic will produce two protons, that's two H plus and an SO4 two minus. Tribasic, three protons, so three H plus and a PO4 three minus. So that's hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid as some examples. As you can see, here's the examples. If you have one mole of, let's say, sulfuric acid, it will produce two moles of hydrogen ions. Acid-base pairs. Now, this is uh, when you have, well, an acid and a base, and they pair up. But we call this kind of conjugate base pairing. An acid-base pair is a pair of two species that transform into each other by gain or loss of a proton. So, if you look at A1, that is nitric acid, will become... B1, which is NO3 minus. Now, why is A1 an acid? Well, because it can release a proton to become NO3 minus. NO3 minus can accept a proton to become HNO3. So they kind of opposites to each other. And so water. Water normally can act as a base or an acid. In this case, it's acting as a base. It's accepting a proton to become the hydronium ion, which is H3O plus. And here's another example. Ammonia plus water becomes the ammonium ion and OH minus. Now this is an example of water acting as an acid because it's releasing a proton which becomes OH minus and OH minus can accept a proton. Strong acids. A strong acid is something that can fully disassociate in solution. That means if you have something like HCl, all of it in solution will become H plus and Cl minus. Now why is this important? Well we use the concentration of H plus to work out the pH and pH is defined as the minus log of the concentration of H plus, square brackets equal H plus. So I'll just give an example, if you have 0.2 mole per dm cubed of HCl, it means you have 0.2 mole per dm cubed of H plus because HCl is monobasic so it releases one proton for every mole of HCl, so one mole of HCl equals one mole of H plus, so 0.2 mole equals 0.2 moles of H plus. pH equals minus log of 0.2 and the pH there is 0.7, so very strong acid. Now if you have 0.2 mole per dm cubed of H2SO4, it's dibasic, so it releases two moles of H plus for every mole of H2SO4, so you have 0.4 moles per dm cubed of H plus, which means pH of minus log of 0.4 equals 0.4. Strong bases. Now for bases we use something called KW. Now this is the ionization of water and I haven't shown it on here but how you get to that is if you have the equilibrium H2O becomes H plus and OH minus you can then work out KC. KC will therefore equal the stuff on the, um, the, stuff on the right which is H plus and OH minus over the stuff on the left, which is H2O. Now, if you times that across, you have Kc times H2O becomes H plus times OH minus. And by definition, Kw is Kc times H2O. So we say that Kw equals a concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. And what we said at 25 degrees Celsius, which if you will remember is standard conditions of 298 Kelvin, Kw equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14 mole 2 dm minus 6. And the way we use this is that the concentration of H plus equals Kw over OH minus. And it's the same principles with the acids. Now, if you, you won't look at anything where well, you shouldn't have many dibasic um, bases, but if you have a monobasic base, if you have one mole of that, it'll produce one mole of OH minus. Dibasic, if you have one mole of that, it'll produce two moles of OH minus. So here, 0.2 moles of NaOH becomes 0.2 moles of OH minus. H plus equals Kw, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, over your concentration. That's the concentration, and you put that into the pH, and you'll get a pH. Now, another way you can do it is if you get 
if you just straight away do the concentration of H plus, so in this case you just say 0.2 moles, you do minus log of 0.2 equals a pH of 0.7, and you do 14 minus that answer. If you look, it's the same. Now, some other rules about H, concentration of H plus. Now, if you have pH equals minus log of concentration of H plus, the concentration of H plus equals 10 to the minus pH. So if your pH equals 1.2 of HCl, 10 to the minus 1.2 equals 0 0.063 mole per dm cubed. It's molar basic, so therefore, concentration of HCl equals 0 0.063 mole per dm cubed. And then an example with bases, pH equals 10, NaOH, 10 to the minus 10 equals 1 to times 10 to the minus 10 uh, moles per dm cubed. And you do 1 times 10 to the minus 14 over 1 times 10 to the minus 10, because equally, as we said, H plus equals Kw over OH minus concentration. OH minus concentration equals the same as Kw over H plus concentration. And that will equal 1 times 10 to the minus 4, which means the concentration of NaOH is 0 0.001. Now I'm going through these examples. It's This one's just practice, practice, practice. It's quite hard to do calculation videos like this. So if you don't understand any actual concepts, please email. But nothing should be too complicated. I'd say this all really look at it when when I'm talking. Perhaps have the book as well. Right now, I don't see this in the book, but I think this is quite important to know. What happens if you're mixing a solution of H of an acid and a base? So you're having a neutralization reaction going on. So here we've got 0 0.5 mole per dm cubed of HCl with 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed of sodium hydroxide. Now, firstly, write out the equation. You'll see it's a one-to-one, -one, so that means every one mole of HCl will react with one mole of NaOH. Or in this case, you have 0 0.2 moles of NaOH. All of that will react with 0 0.2 moles of HCl, react to produce water and a salt, which have no effect on the pH. Meaning you're left with 0 0.3 mole per dm cubed of HCl, so then you can just work out the pH from there. Now, one thing I've been caught up on a little bit of few times because I'm just an idiot. I saw the question where it said it, here's the concentration of HCl, work out the pH. You then add one mole per dm cubed of NaCl. What would the pH be? What you know what effect would this have on the pH? Or it asks you have one mole per dm cubed of HCl and one mole per dm cubed of NaCl. What will the pH of the NaCl solution be? The answer is seven. NaCl does not affect pH because it has no protons and no H OH. So in this case, it can't accept a proton, so it's not a base. It can't release a proton, so it's not an acid. So it has no effect on the pH. Weak acids, now these partially disassociate in solution. So that means you get an equilibrium where you have some acid and some kind of um, well high H plus and the minus version. Now it's a very small amount it actually disassociates very small amount so when it says partially it's really is a well a very small amount and we assume therefore since it is such a small amount that the concentration of h plus and in this case for ethanoic acid the ch3coo minus ion we assume they are equal so we can say the equilibrium is the concentration of ha is in equilibrium with the concentration of h plus squared why is this important well Ka, think of it again like the equilibrium constant, but we've said with the acid disassociation constant. So if you look on the top, you have the stuff on the right, which is H plus and A minus. On the bottom, you have HA. Now we say that H plus and A minus are equal. We say that Ka equals H plus squared over HA, which means H plus equals the square root of Ka times HA. I'll show you an example so that makes sense. I've been using 0.2 moles, so you just see the difference in kind of acid strength. 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed of CHCOOH. If the Ka equals 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5 mole per dm cubed, you can then say that Ka, which we have the value of, equals H plus squared over the concentration of the acid, which is 0 0.2, which means it's very easy then to rearrange. Times 0 0.2 up, so you've got H plus squared. Square root it equals H plus, and then do the pH of it. 
Now in this case, Ka equals 10 to the minus pKa. So the way I like to think of it, think of Ka like H plus concentration. Think of pKa as the pH. And you'll see why that's useful. As strength of an acid increases, the Ka will increase and the pKa will decrease. So why, why I say something like pH and H plus? If you think of Ka as H plus, as the strength of an acid increases, it has a higher concentration of H plus ions, but the pH value decreases because the lower the value, the more acidic it is. So pKa, which has a P in front, like pH, will decrease as acid strength increases. Ka, which is like H plus concentration, will increase. So that's the way I like to remember it. Now, buffer solutions. A buffer solution is a mixture that minimizes pH change on addition of small amounts of acid or base. If you add a lot of acid or a lot of base, it will change, but on a small amount, it won't. And you have to know how they work. What you do is you have to add a weak acid and its conjugate base in the form of a salt. Now, this is how you do it. You have CH3COOH, which will disassociate partially in solution, and you'll end up with, I say, the actual amount of of the um, base and the H plus ion remaining is very small. So you've got a high concentration of C of ethanoic acid, low concentration of H plus and CH3COO minus. Now you've got a salt as well. A salt will fully disassociate pretty much to so here CH3COO minus Na plus will fully disassociate pretty much to CH3COO minus plus Na plus Na plus yeah. Now that means you've got a low concentration of the salt, high concentrations of the negative ion and Na+. If you have these two together, it means you've got a high concentration of the acid, a low concentration of H+, and a high concentration of the conjugate base. Now we'll see how this works next, but that's the important thing to remember. You have a high concentration of the acid and the base, low concentration of H+. So two columns. Firstly, if you add H plus ions, the concentration of H plus ions will increase. Now this will be mopped up by the CH3CO minus, the base. The base will accept the protons. This means that equilibrium will shift to the left hand side because more acid is being made. And this means overall that the concentration of H plus is decreased because it's all shift to the left. On the addition of OH minus, you get OH minus reacting with the H plus a small amount to form water. This means that H plus decreases. So the acid will disassociate more because equilibrium is shifted to the right hand side. So the overall the amount of uh, H plus increases. So the pH remains constant. So just remember all of it, write the equation, the general equation of HA equilibrium sign H plus plus A minus. With acid, the H plus is mopped up by the base. Equilibrium shift to the left hand side and the acid is made so you get less acid overall, less of the H plus ions. When alkali is added or base is added, it reacts with the H plus ions to form water so the H plus concentration decreases. So the equilibrium will try and fix this by shifting more to the right hand side by the acid disassociating, which increases overall the number of protons. Hope that makes sense. That's the one bit of theory in the acid section, really and it comes up every time and it's a six marker make sure you know how to do how to explain this it took me a while but that's the this one sheet really shows how to do it now if you had to do a calculation of a buffer solution so we have 0.15 so sorry 0.15 mol per dm cubed of methanoic acid and we have 0.065 mol per dm cubed of its conjugate or a salt. Ka equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 mol per dm cubed. Here's the equation, the equilibrium. Ka, you see what Ka equals. Now we want the concentration of H plus. Now this time you can't assume that H plus and HCOO minus are the same because they're not. Remember you have a low concentration of H plus, high concentration of HCOOH, high concentration of HCOO minus because you've added the conjugate base or the salt. So H plus therefore equals Ka times the, the acid over the base. And we assume, well we, we know that the, the salt fully disassociates. 
So that means that the con the concentration of the salt is equal to con the to the concentration of the base, because when HCOOH disassociates, it dissociates, producing a very small amount of the base. So we assume it just doesn't affect it. There's a lot of assumptions in pH calculations. So H plus equals Ka, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 times 0.15 the acid over 0.065, which equals that minus log it 3.43 so what you essentially do is just you look at the we do Ka times the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt and then minus log it titration curves now there are four you really need to know now what this is is this is the when you're doing a titration and you have a let's say start with an, a base and you're adding acid the pH will suddenly change Literally, one drop would cause it to go from, you know, 10 all the way down to, you know, 3. So that's why you have a very sharp peak. And you need to know how these titration curves look with different acids and bases. If you have a strong acid and a strong base, I've done all of these starting with an acid going to the base. So you have an acid in your uh, little, you know, conical flask and you're adding base to it. If you have both of them are strong, it will start low, end high. If you have a strong acid and a weak base, it will start low and finish you know, somewhere a bit above 7, so 8 or 9. If you have a weak acid and a strong base, it will start off a bit below 7, so 4 or 5, and finish very high at about you know, 13. And if you have weak of both, it will start off about 4 or 5, finish about 8 or 9. And in the bracket, I've done it because you can have it the other way, as ra way around. So in this case, you start off with a base in the conical flask and you're adding acid. Exact same principle, start, except in this case, starts high, ends low, but very high and very low. Now, what can we use these for? Well, you want to use an indicator which will suddenly change so you know when you've reached the end point. And you can do this by having an indicator which changes colour in a pH range which is exactly where your vertical pit of the graph is. You want it exactly on the vertical line, nowhere where it's curving. So that means when you add a drop, it'll suddenly change colour so you know your end point. So, for example, here, I've said that a good point between the lines would be 4 and 9. Now, let's say you had phenolphthalein. I can't remember at all this is actually correct. But if you say phenolphthalein, let's say that changes at pH 6 to 8, then you know you've got a good one here and you want to use that one. If you had methyl orange, which changes, I think, about 3 to 5, that's not very good because it could change before the, the actual chain, you know, that vertical part in the graph so that's not useful and there you go that's all we need to know the main thing about this the main big things is the calculations that is the h plus calculations kw and ka and how a buffer solution works those are the main things you'll be asked on so an acid will donate a proton bases accept protons ph equals minus log of the concentration of h plus you can know kw ka how buffer solutions work and calculations with them and you need to be able to look at titration curves and work with them so as I said, it's quite hard to explain calculations over, you know, just talking. But I hope the written stuff helps. The best thing is to do is practice, use the book, email me with any examples you don't understand, and I'll reply with an actual way to do them. And I will try at some point over the holiday to do some past papers so you can see what sort of questions you'll get and how they work. But thank you for watching. Email, like, subscribe, as usual. And goodbye.